We are watching faculty now link arms to protect students protesting again in favor of terrorists. The 2 p.m. deadlines I just mentioned to vacate Columbia's campus, it just came and went, and with the lackadaisical response from authorities would probably be accurate. Other campuses seem to be handing these menaces just fine. They're arresting them left and right, and they're going away. But last week, and especially over the weekend, and even today, we're seeing the American flag being replaced by the Palestinian flag by a bunch of students who just had their loans forgiven by American tax dollars. Liberalism is a cancer on our society. They make nothing better, yet destroy everything in the name of progress. Progress that is not progress at all, but rather regressive, and more importantly, submissive. The progressive left makes the key pillar of their movement to being submissive to whatever the current thing is. BLM a couple years ago, and DEI, and Antifa, now Hamas. But the Iranian Revolution understands its aim is not simply national. It's about the expulsion of the United States from the region. There's no security for Iranians without um, this uh, expulsion of uh, imperialists from the region, which then it also necessitates the defeat of Zionism. Sure, dude, whatever. I mean, this is the sentiment of the people running and supporting these protesters. Notice the Palestinian flag in the background. And Democrats are seemingly willing to just, like, go along with this. You're, you're familiar with the term... Hard times create hard men, hard men create good times, good times create weak men, weak men create hard times. America has been rolling in some really good times recently, and it's created some really weak people that have needed to invent things to be mad about. Nancy Pelosi, she remember this? She led a crowd of her Democratic colleagues just being submissive, literally kneeling down to BLM. Democrats couldn't churn out the support fast enough, raising billions of dollars, most of which went to just buy large mansions for all the people in the top of that organization. What was left over was then spent on organizing, and then they burnt down cities with it. Actually, to the tune of $2 billion, believe it or not. Yet, yeah, where are the Democrats denouncing that? Antifa, same thing. Local mayors let them burn down courthouses, shut down traffic, and even took over an entire section of a city. But now, the current thing is Palestine. Why? Why? Because the left told them that Palestine were the victims here, even though they were the ones who waged the attack against Israel? None of these kids have any idea what they're actually protesting in favor of. And over the weekend, the footage of our American flag... Watch this, folks. This is what we're seeing. The American flag being replaced with the Palestinian flag, that started to service, and it made me sick. And that's what they want. They want someone like you and me to be upset. Uh, they better be careful what they wish for. This generation is mad at all things that are pro-America because they've been taught to be liberal submissives, and the most radical factions of Islam are now seizing the opportunity during these campus protests. The party that wants the Lord's Prayer removed from schools is out there praying to Allah? Got it. That makes a whole ton of sense. And the party that says they're all for the LGBTQ whatever movement, the party that is pro-feminism, the party that is now worshiping Islam on campus... And before the lefties freak out and try to tie this to some Islamophobia, stop. Just stop. This has nothing to do with that and everything to do with the pro proving the fact that it's preferable governance that, that Hamas wants, that Palestine wants, is Sharia law. And it's not compatible with American constitutional and Western values, despite what liberal college universities seemingly are in favor of. And you... You think I'm about, if you're about to tweet at me that I'm off base here or whatever, if you're from Dearborn, Michigan, stop. Answer me this. Name me one place where Christians and Jews have flocked to live that is governed by Islamic fundamentalist principles. Name me one. Name me one country. Oh, now name me how many countries that Muslim countries, fundamentalist Muslim countries, that Christians and Jews have fled out of the last five decades. And why is that? And this is what I said last week. These kids have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. These same college kids that champion all the liberal causes of the day may not know what the vast majority of Islam is in fact in favor of Sharia law. And now according to Pew Research, 84% in South Asia, 77% in Southeast Asia, 74% of the Middle East and North Africa all favor Sharia law. Now why do I bring this up? Because Hamas, or what the college kids are calling Palestine, are some of the most brutal enforcers of Sharia law. Hamas is a spin-off of the Muslim Brotherhood, which is listed on some variants by a terrorist watch list by Bahrain, Egypt, Russia, S Syria, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. That's just to name a few. And fun fact also, ISIS was also a spin-off of the Muslim Brotherhood. But I digress.
This is what these kids on college campuses are advocating for. One of the most harsh radical factions of Islam that, by, by the way, the people of Gaza, elect, that, who they elected Hamas to run their region 15 years ago. I, what, what are these kids learning in school if they're not learning this? What they're also failing to tell these kids joining these protests here in America, by the way, is that in 1988, Hamas, the covenant, stated that this law governing the land of Palestine in the Islamic Sharia. Hmm. You know what else is not allowed under Sharia law? Being gay. Where's the liberal outrage here? Don't ask. I mean, if you don't believe me, just ask CNN. It was one of their headlines. Now, that article points out that in recent years, Islam in Western countries have had to permit things like the LGBTQ ideologies. But make no mistake, in Sharia, in a Sharia-governed country, if you're gay, they'll probably throw you off a building. But the Palestinian recruiters conveniently left that part off the college protest brochure. Other tenets of Sharia include cutting off hands for stealing. A girl who is raped isn't allowed to testify against her alleged rapist. In fact, women have almost no rights in Sharia and have to cover themselves from head to toe. There's also things like g g general mutilation for young girls, arranged marriages, husbands are allowed to beat their wives, stoning for adultery. Only for women, though. Just for women. Tons more that the George Soros funding is leaving off the invite. Look, I only mention this because of who these children at our college campuses are supporting here in America. 89% of Gaza and the West Bank believe in Sharia law. That's the area they're calling Palestine. And America's sons and daughters, whose parents are likely paying 60, 70, 80 grand a year to be exposed to this, are seemingly, what are they, unaware of what they're supporting? I mean, give me a break. And when anyone brings up any of these facts, the left screams Islamophobia just to shut down discussion. Because this is about the systemic disassembling of America. And where is the left injecting in any opposition to our values into society at every level, hiding behind the muse that they are somehow oppressed and colleges are filled with our, that are filled with our American kids are just becoming victim to all this and aren't doing their own research. Sharia law and Islamic fundamentalism cannot coexist with our constitutional republic, our freedoms, our ways. Maybe they should teach that in college.